Hey folks, how are you doing? Hope all of you are well. I get a lot of questions about time-restricted eating, intermittent fasting, and it's a really interesting topic and there's a lot to unpack. Uh, the, some of the takeaways that I've learned over the course of time, uh, and I've been looking at this topic for ages. The first article that I published on this in the performance menu was back in 2005, looking at the potential that intermittent fasting uh, if properly applied, could offer some really significant performance and health benefits. When we look at this stuff in mice, it's fascinating because some intermittent fasting appears to have all of the benefits of caloric restriction, extending lifespan in these critters, uh, with potentially none of the downsides. But what's interesting about that is one day of fasting in a mouse model is equivalent to seven days of fasting in a human model. So. That makes it kind of tough. Like uh, I, I think um, a lot of people would be totally game for doing a, a you know one day eat, one day don't eat, particularly if you could like effectively you know double your average lifespan or something like that. But it just doesn't appear to apply the same way. So then when we just start asking what are the potential benefits around time restricted eating and, and fasting. In all honesty, it, it, there's just not a ton of upside. Uh, Bill Legakos has, has done some great unpacking on this and he's kind of made the point that there's a lot of nothing sauce there. But uh, again, there's a lot of detail and nuance. When we, when we talk about this stuff though, initially, I think the whole discussion was just time, uh, intermittent fasting as a baseline and uh, in general what people would do is just kind of compress their their feeding window and extend the fasting window usually the way that people did that was by skipping breakfast and possibly lunch and then mainly just having dinner eating later in the day that works for a lot of people like they they feel good uh they they, they motor along pretty well but it is interesting a lot of the circadian biology research suggests that maybe we do better by eating more of our calories, particularly carbohydrate, earlier in the day. And again, I know this flies in the face of a lot of popular practices, like uh, carb backloading advocates for eating more of the carbs later in the evening. Some people notice that they feel better by eating, say, more carbs or more calories later in the day. They tend to have uh, better sleep. So again, there's just a lot of different moving parts with this stuff. At a minimum, I would make the case that what time-restricted feeding does, intermittent fasting, time-restricted feeding, however we want to call that stuff, at a minimum what it does is it limits total caloric intake. And so that's probably the biggest upside that we get out of any of these practices. If we're just not overeating, then there's a huge, huge benefit to that. And when I say just not overeating, that, that's, um, that's a big deal in a modern world of hyperpalatable, ubiquitous food. So, that's not an inconsequential thing, but there's not potentially a ton of magic beyond that. All that said, I could make the case that if you had somebody that wants to be healthier, but they're just, they don't want to really change what they're eating. They're not going to eat paleo. They're not going to eat vegan. They're just not going to modify their basic dietary approach. A lot of people are actually willing if you set them up and you said, hey, okay, just eat between the hours of like 8 a.m. and 4 or 5 p.m and eat pretty much whatever you want, but just constrain it within those hours. There's some research that suggests simply doing that may be quite beneficial for people. They lose weight, their metabolic profile improves with regards to health. So in that regard, I could make the, you know, it's a really effective tool or potentially an effective tool. And then if somebody starts making progress, maybe as they feel better and they're not suffering blood sugar uh, highs and lows and what have you, maybe they're a little more open to changing the kind of qualitative nature of what they're eating. One of the um, maybe uh, danger points or, or caveats I, I would have in the time-restricted feeding, intermittent fasting story, is that most of the people willing to do this type of stuff, they're already eating like five grams of carbohydrate a month. They do CrossFit six days a week with hot yoga every day as a recovery workout. And it, like, they're just so over the top that the people who are willing to do this type of stuff are already maybe kind of burning the candle at both ends. And I have seen some folks really cook themselves by layering super low carb diet and time restricted feeding and high intensity exercise, fasted exercise and all that stuff. So anyway, hopefully this helps provide a little bit of context for that time restricted feeding story. 
I think that there is some benefit, particularly uh, looking at potentially front loading calories and carbohydrate earlier in your day. I would at least play with that and see how it works out. I do understand that from just kind of a social perspective, skipping breakfast is usually easier than skipping dinner. It's certainly true in my world, like the sit down with the family for dinner is kind of a, a more um, structured affair than breakfast. That's a little bit of, of managed chaos. So anyway, uh, keep the questions coming in. This is how I learn and continue to hopefully help you guys. So take care and hope to see y'all soon.